Let's talk about basics of programming. How to think, how to decompose a problem, and where to even begin if you want to wrap your mind around this beautiful creative hobby or the beginning of a career. A while ago, I watched this video and found it intriguing. What a nice concept to demonstrate how to think about a software development. The explanation will be language agnostic about the big picture principles, but we are going to use C++ syntax for the code, simply because I have to choose something, but don't worry, it's not going to be difficult. So let's begin. You are an aspiring software developer and wanted to recreate this video, or you just might be interested in the simulation itself and you might be a fan of rock, paper, scissors game. First thing to do is to replicate the basic layout. Take a look here. I can see three groups where each group is associated with a specific sign. We have paper, rock, and scissor. We should start easy, so let's say that each sign will be a letter. Let's specify the position and a letter I'm going to write. Not bad, let's continue. Second step could be about the groups. I don't have only one letter, only one sign, I have plenty of them. For this purpose, it's not bad to use some sort of cycle, like four cycle. So let's specify center point of the paper group and let's accompany some random number generator to be able to give other papers some offset from the center point. Let's repeat the process five times. And as you can see, we have five papers. What to do next? Sooner or later, you will be in front of decision. Shall I work more broader? In this case, shall I extend my current functionality to other signs as well? Or shall I go deeper? Meaning, shall I continue with the paper till the end? This might be difficult to see, especially if you are a beginner and there is no clear answer for that. I would recommend to take the path which seems to be easier for you right now. Over the time when you will become more and more experienced, it will be easier decision. So now let's go broader. I'm going to specify center points for two other signs and update my force cycle. Pretty straightforward so far. I have three groups of different signs for the rock, paper, scissors game. So now we have something, let's start to polish it. As you might see, we are only drawing the signs, but we have no control over them. They literally don't exist. They are just drawn on the screen without some background data. So let's add the data. Let's remember for each of them their position, X and Y. In C++ we can create structure for that, so let's do it. And the structure can be immediately used to specify our center points. So now in my fourth cycle I have creation of the signs and their drawing. Before we start to move them, there's one more thing we can do. As a developer you should always think about decomposition how to decompose the part of your solution to independent pieces. Good thing is that you can connect the same pieces in a different way later to achieve different functionality. Or if it will be something which will need update, it will be easier for you to manage a shorter piece of code. Let's separate the sign creation from their drawing. Visually the same, but from code perspective, way cleaner. Also what I did was to replace the constant five with some arbitrary n. We call the numbers, such as five, magic numbers, and they are usually not welcomed. It's fine for a prototype phase, but really not much further. <laughs> Let's work on the movement. As you can see, the signs are flying all over. For that, we can extend our structure for something called vector. So we have position and a movement vector, again in the X and Y direction. We can use random numbers again to make the vector random, because in the original video, the signs are flying all over the place without any system. Uh, at least without any clearly visible system or pattern. When we do it, we have our cycle to update the position regularly and uh, draw to put it on a screen. The code is meant to be illustrative. It's not going to work if you just copy and paste to your solution. You can talk about the proper code in another video, how to write it line by line in C++ or Python, for instance. But now it's just about the ideas. The first cycle, which defines the definition of the vectors, will be in some init phase of your program. Whereas the second cycle, the update, and the third one with the draw will be in some sort of loop. We can even say infinite loop, just working in the background. Now I'm in the similar place as before. Shall I go broader or deeper? Just for a change, let's go deeper. I have my papers, so let's switch from the letters to some beautiful picture. You can notice a cool thing right now, the fruit of our previous decision. We need to update the drawing only. So we're gonna set some sprites, some graphics, but our draw part of the code is the only thing which is going to be replaced. The update is the same as before, just the draw changed. Can you see how clean it is? If I would later like to change my movement as well to give some artificial intelligence or whatever, I can change only the update part of the code. The drawing will stay the same. Amazing. Now we shall think about collisions. There will be signs flying all around, interacting with each other. It's usually way easier if you have uh, things which can collide or which can interact in one long structure. 
let's create long array with all of our signs. Well, we still need to know what is paper, what is rock, and what is scissors. So we are going to extend our structure for the sign. In C++, the sign can be enumeration. In my creation of the signs or in the updates, I can have only one array. And in draw method, it's the same thing. Just I should distinguish uh, what sign draw in this particular location. As a bonus thing, especially when we are talking about collisions or interactions, it's not bad to utilize technique called as debug draw. It means that we can draw some helping structure. We can try to visualize what is happening in the background under the hood. In our case, I need to detect if the signs have some overlap. For that, I can specify area, some, some zone. The zone can be a circle because this is the easiest thing. Let's draw some circles around my signs just to see what's happening. I use the white circle around each one of them and the red circles in case of some collisions, some overlaps. Now I know that my code is all right, and if I don't need to see the circles anymore, I can easily remove them. And basically that's it, only one thing which left is to handle the actual collisions. And you can see here, S1 can be the first sign, S2 can be the second sign. If rock meet scissors, both of them should change to rock. If scissors meet paper, both of them should change to scissors. Easy as that. So let's take a while and enjoy. see that the simulation is kind of random and that's that's all right. It can be used as a demonstration that the C++ random number generator would be used is in fact random and it has normal distribution. If we let this program run several times, it, it might happen that the papers will win, scissors will win, or if it can be even infinite or not infinite, but let's say very long. That will be all for today. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time.